Welcome everybody. This is Steph's 10 Rules of Code. I'm Steph. I've been a developer since the 1990s. Over that period of time, I've come up with my 10 solid rules of code. You learn these rules of code, you will become a much better coder much more quickly. All right, rule number one, there is no such thing as a bad programming language. Let me give you the bullet points. Number one, if you learn how to program in JavaScript or Python or Java or C Sharp or PHP, pick a language. If you learn how to program in any of these languages and many others, you will easily be able to pivot to another language if the demand is there. So if, for example, you learn Python and then you find out after a year or two, some asteroid hits the planet and everybody is programming in Ruby, for you to pivot from Python to Ruby will take you just a few days. So this whole notion that you're going to pick the wrong language is an illusion. It just doesn't happen in real life. Ask any developer with five years or more experience, they will tell you this. They will tell you it doesn't make a difference. Another point is that in your programming career, you're gonna find that you will naturally pivot from one language to the next. It's actually not uncommon, especially in the web stack, where you will be using two programming languages, potentially even three on occasion, to get the job done. So again, it's just the nature of being a software developer. It is the nature of being a programmer to pivot from language A to B on a regular basis. In fact, a big part of your job as a professional developer is to have that ability, to have that ability to learn new technologies, to adapt and adopt according to the needs of the job. And the final point is that these days, I'm recording this in 2021, the programming languages that you're using today are very stable. What do I mean by that? Think about the top five or 10 most used programming languages today. Go check out the different indexes that are out there, Tyobi, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What you will find is that the top languages are usually JavaScript, Python, Java, C++, C, PHP, uh, Python, I said Python, <laughs> C Sharp, C++, C. These languages have been popular for decades, for decades. And in fact, when you look at the, the index of the top 10 languages, the ones that are rising to the top are not any of the new languages. It's all the old established languages. The point I'm trying to make is that the days of rapid change in languages and technologies people are using to create applications, whether it be web apps, mobile apps, or traditional apps, etc. you don't get that change too much anymore. It's pretty stable now. Why? Because like in any other industry, software develop, development went through that, that, that uh, stage in the early 90s where there was rapid, rapid change. Every year, things changed quite a bit. I remember, I was there. But starting in the early 2000s, it started to level off. The rate of change wasn't so steep, wasn't so quick. It was much slower. If you go this way on the, ch on the chart, that's the change. More this way is the change. Anyway, so the change r is very, very slow now. So things don't change much. The difference between Python, for example, 3.0 and 3.9 is very, very incremental. The changes between uh, JavaScript uh, traditional, ES, I think it's ES5 versus ES6, uh, don't quote me on ES5, but the difference between old JavaScript which is still super used all the time versus ES6, tiny. If you know JavaScript, for you to learn ES6, it will take you like 20 minutes, half an hour to get your head wrapped around it. That's it. I can go on and on and on. You get the idea. So this whole illusion that you will learn a bad programming language is exactly that. It's an illusion. Again, to recap, why? Because once you know how to program, you can pivot from one to the next very easily. And in fact, as a, pro as a professional developer, you will have to do that, and it's fun, it becomes fun. Number two, the languages are very, very stable. They're very stable. They don't change much at all. And number three, I forget, you can go back and review what number three was, but you get the idea. Rule number two of the 10 rules of code, runtime speed is less important than write 
time speed. Let me say that again. The speed at which the code runs is less important than how long it takes you to write a piece of software with that code. So why is this the case? Well, let me just describe write time. If you're writing an app in Python, it might take you five hours. To get the same type of app out of C++, it might take you 50 hours. Another example is PHP. To send an email back in the day when I was first forced, I was forced to write PHP. To send an email with PHP was one line of code. To send an email with uh, Java web technology, I was service JSP, it was a whole page of code. One line versus a page. One line versus a page. What I discovered when I was forced to write my very first PHP app, and this is with really old, crappy PHP, not modern PHP, I was pretty disgusted as a purist Java programmer. I was pretty disgusted with PHP. I was like, oh my God, it doesn't have proper uh, air trapping. It's not even object oriented. This is PHP 3. Now PHP again, it's got all the features that you'd expect in a modern enterprise language. Back in those days though, it did not. It was pretty bad. But what I did discover in writing PHP, uh, though it had its flaws, like every programming language, it had certain advantages. The fact, was, the fact of the matter is I was able to write an app in maybe 10% of the code that it took me to write the same app in Java. Wasn't as robust, it didn't have as good error trapping, made it harder to, to debug. But of course, if you have 10% of the code, if you have to debug one line of code instead of 10, it's a lot easier to debug that code. So uh, that's write time versus runtime. Runtime, of course, is how fast the code runs when it's actually running. Fact of the matter is, C and C++ code will run circles around many of the other popular languages, Python, JavaScript, PHP, Java, C Sharp. Uh, for the most part, C, C++ code is an order of magnitude faster when it comes to runtime especially when you compare it to Java, JavaScript and Python, PHP, Ruby. Ruby is so slow, it's unbelievable compared to, compared to uh, C, C++. But the industry still uses much slower to run languages like Python, like PHP, like uh, JavaScript, simply because it takes a fraction of the time to write your programs, to write your code with the slower to run languages. This is gonna to continue to be the trend where people are gonna favor the faster write time languages over runtime because A, hardware is getting so fa fast, the computers, the smartphones, the servers, every year they just get faster and faster and faster. So the perceived difference between the super fast runtime code versus the much slower to run runtime code in most applications, not all, but in most applications, the perceived speed differential is inconsequential. You won't even see it. So that is in continuing to increase as hardware just gets faster and faster and faster. Also, the internet where most of our apps are running, the networks are just getting faster and faster and faster. 4G, 5G is rolling out. Again, it as the internet, as the network speed increases, the need for super run, super fast runtime speed decreases as well. And finally, in the higher level languages like the Pythons, like the PHP, like the Rubies, like the JavaScript, they are getting more and more optimized over time. So Python today is faster than Python probably 10 years ago. I can tell you for sure that PHP when they went from PHP 5 to PHP 7, you had a 50%, 50% increase in speed. So PHP, Python will probably never catch up to a C or C++ in terms of speed, but they, they more than make up for it because the, run time, the write time speed, they more than make up for it because the write time speed is so much more efficient. Rule number three, Concentrate on the basics if you want to become a coder faster, and more importantly, you want to become a better coder faster. The difference between the noob, not so good coder, 
and the very, very good coder is. But the very good coder has a very good understanding of the basics. This is nothing special about coding. You see this in any field, any endeavor. Ask any master chef, ask any uh, great athlete. They just work on their basics. It's no difference with coding. Don't let yourself get uh, glamorized by the shiny new frameworks and the advanced libraries. No, 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 no. If you want to be a good coder, master your basics, continue to work on those fundamentals. It's going to just make your life much easier as a developer, especially when you're learning. Rule number four, don't get caught up in tutorial hell. Tutorial hell is basically that. You just keep on doing more and more and more tutorials, whether it be on YouTube or Udemy or any other platform, and you never get down to actually writing real world projects. What you're going to discover when you actually become a real developer, it's not cookie cutter. It's more of like a, a, a spy type of situation for you where you have to try to figure out the best way to build that app, what technologies you choose, what libraries you use, what strategies, what design patterns you use. Uh, that is um, the key to being a great developer, not just doing more and more tutorials. So my recommendation is that you do your basics, your foundations, then do one or two small tutorials just to give you an idea of how the code puts together but a good foundation course will have tutorials built in. And then you go out there and you do the real thing. You do the real thing. Don't let your insecurities, don't let your insecurities uh, put you into tutorial hell where you never get around to actually building a real thing. I always equate this to people who go to a boxing gym or MMA gym and hit the heavy bags or the pads, but never actually step in the ring. I've seen it firsthand. I used to do a lot of boxing. People who hit the pads for a long time because they figured, I got to get my skills up. I got to get my combinations better. I got to get faster. They'll do that for a long time. Then when they, if, if they ever get into the ring, if and when they ever get into the ring, what they do is they get a beating right away because they, and they quickly realize that all that pad, pad hitting, all those tutorials, if you will, didn't really prepare them for fighting. To really get good at application development, you have to actually build things for real. It's a totally different process than just walking through a tutorial. So do not get caught up in tutorial hell. Rule number five, learn to refactor your code. You'll see below links to uh, the recommended refactoring book. There's one for Java, one for JavaScript. Take whichever, whichever one is better for you. Refactoring is just a process of cleaning up your code. And over the years, software developers have figured out how to identify certain key problems and how to clean them up. So a good refactoring course or book will show you a classic problem, the cleanup. Classic problem, the cleanup. Learn to refactor. If you want to upgrade your skills, you want to level up very quickly, learning to refactor will shoot your skill level up, uh, will leapfrog you a couple years ahead of people who don't learn to refactor. Very, very, very easily, it will speed up your whole process. Trust me, it has worked for me and many other people that I know. Rule number six, you gotta learn design patterns. Design patterns is another one of those fundamental skill sets. A design pattern is basically an, an agreed upon methodology, a way to structure your code to solve particular problems. If this doesn't make any sense for you, you should do a good funda fundamentals course, link below. A design pattern is basically, again, it's just a agreed upon way. It helps in a couple of ways to learn design patterns. First of all, it will teach you how to write better code. Uh, second of all, it will teach you how to structure your code better. It will allow you to communicate with other developers more effectively. So for example, when I talk to my developers, I'll say, okay, for this situation here, just use a facade. They'll know exactly what it is. A facade is a, is a design pattern. It's a way in which you write code. Or I might say, okay, we're gonna deal with that. We're gonna use uh, dependency injection. I used to call them filters. Again, it's a design pattern, which means a whole bunch of things. And once you understand that pattern, I don't have to explain all these things to you. You know what it is. You know what dependency injection is. You know what a filter is. You'll know what MVC is, which by the way, is probably the most important design pattern out there. Number seven, Rule number seven, you're going to learn multiple programming languages. Once you become a little bit more experienced in coding, you're going to like learning new languages. It's fun. When you start off, let's say, with Python, and then you start learning JavaScript, 
by learning JavaScript, you're going to become a better Python coder. And then after you know Python and JavaScript, and then you jump into it, say, C Sharp, by knowing Python and JavaScript going into C Sharp, first of all, you're going to learn C Sharp super quickly. Second of all, by learning C Sharp, you're going to become better at JavaScript and Python as well. You get the idea. So expect in your career, you will learn multiple programming languages. I refer you back to rule number one, and uh, it kind of all makes sense. Rule number eight, communication skills is huge. Before I would learn another framework, another language, after you got your fundamentals, after you know your design patterns, after you know your refactoring, you should improve your communication skills, written, verbal, and psychological. Just having good interpersonal skills will make your life a lot easier as a developer. Whether you're working with a team or working with clients, discussing things with your boss, being able to write well, to communicate well, and to have good, just good interpersonal skills so people want to deal with you is going to be huge for your career if you want to advance. Number nine, learn a framework. So let's say you decide you're going to be a Python server-side web app developer. Well, you probably want to learn, well, not probably, you will want to learn a framework like Python Django or Python Flask for a few reasons. Number one, you're going to open up opportunities for jobs. Number two, it's going to improve your skills as a coder. Once you have learned a framework, you'll see how a large number of developers have figured out the best way to create a web app in the case of Python Django. And so you're going to learn what they've done. You're going to learn, uh, it's going to teach you how to be a better developer and coder. And finally, with using a framework, you're just going to be able to build fairly complex apps in a fraction of the time because all that framework code is just going to speed up the whole thing for you. So whether it's Python and Django, or whether you use a library like a React or a Vue, or you use PHP Laravel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, by learning frameworks, you will become a better coder because not only will you learn how developers figure out how to build certain things in a certain way, but you also speed up the whole process. And finally, I forgot to mention this earlier, your code is going to be cleaner. When you use a Python Django or PHP Laravel or uh, Spring, uh, Spring Boot with Java, as an example, that code base in those frameworks are very clean. It will have very few bugs, if any bugs at all, because they've had so many people contribute to those projects, but they're going to be very clean. So. For example, if you're using PHP Laravel, Laravel is the predominant PHP uh, full stack framework, that authentication layer that they provide is just going to be much better than the one you're going to write because it's been refined over time by lots and lots of contributors. Lesson number 10, don't try to learn everything. One of the rules I teach is you get to learn to learn the right technologies at the right time. I typically call this the need to nerd basis. Learn technologies on a need to nerd basis. There's so much out there in terms of technology. So many languages, so many frameworks, so many libraries, new ones are coming out all the time. When you are a beginner, it can be very daunting because you're going, wow, I gotta learn all this stuff. Here's the good news, you don't. In fact, the vast majority of it, you'll never have to learn. The vast majority of it, you will learn only on a need to nerd basis, when you need it. So you do fundamentals, as I, as I described, pick a choice language, could be Python with Django, or C Sharp, it could be Java, it could be PHP Laravel, whatever it is. Learn refactoring, learn some design patterns, you're good to go. All the other stuff out there, you learn when the project or the job demands it. So you may run into a place where they want you to learn Node and Express. You learn it then. You learn it then. Or they say, listen, we want to build a pretty complex front end. We're going to use um, React. So you learn React at that time. You get the idea. So there are a lot of technologies that you learn when you need to learn them. You, don't have, you, have to be, you should be aware of them. You kind of look at what's out there, so you're kind of aware. But at the end of the day, the jobs will dictate what you need to learn beyond the fundamentals. All right, there you have it. Those are the 10 rules of code. My 10 rules, rules that I put together over the last uh, couple of decades as being a professional developer in some capacity. I hope they're useful. If you follow these rules, you will become a far better developer quicker 
and it will make your life as a developer much easier.